Owen Fulperson, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery of yet another extreme neutron star, or technically an extreme pulsar, that almost beats all records, and more importantly, reveals an unusual mystery when it comes to the maximum speed of rotation for various neutron stars. Because here the researchers have recently discovered that this particular neutron star seems to spin 716 times per second. Or in other words, its rotation around its axis can be measured as 716 hertz, making this one of the fastest spinning objects ever seen. But intriguingly, its rotation is exactly the same as the other object discovered over a decade ago, and that by itself doesn't really make a lot of sense. And so let's discuss this particular idea in a little bit more detail, but first let's start with the actual system and why it's already kind of strange. Here's one of the older images created by NASA, illustrating what the system might contain. And so here, this unusual X-ray binary known as 4U1820-30, discovered inside the globular cluster NGC 6624, contains a neutron star and, surprisingly, a white dwarf. And because white dwarf is usually much smaller than any other star, here these two objects orbit really close. A single orbit takes just 11 minutes, making this an extremely short period and the only such system known to us out of all low-mass X-ray binaries. In a lot of other X-ray binaries, where we usually have either a black hole or a neutron star, they orbit around much larger stars, and thus a single orbit takes much, much longer. But the overall idea is the same. They basically capture the mass from the nearby partner, because the partner reaches what's known as the Roche lobe. Its mass starts to overflow into the black hole or the neutron star, with all of this infalling mass then forming the accretion disk, that eventually starts producing a lot of major emissions. But for objects like neutron stars, something else usually happens when they start to accrete so much mass. If they were not spinning very fast before, all of this mass then starts to accelerate their spin because of the transfer of the angular momentum. And so if a typical neutron star only spins one or two times per second, suddenly, through this process of accretion, they'll start acquiring a huge amount of spin, with current models establishing the limit to be approximately 350 rotations per second. And so for many different binary systems, where neutron stars start to accrete mass, they usually start rotating at least 350 times per second. But anything about that does become a little bit more challenging. And on top of all of this accretion, they also obviously start producing a lot of additional explosions as a lot of this mass accumulates and reaches critical values. And it's basically the case for this system as well. Just like so many other systems, it shows a lot of bursty behavior, with the accretion disk first producing a lot of X-rays, but then at some point producing an enormous thermonuclear explosion that in some cases can happen very frequently. In some sense, these are similar to your typical nova observed around white dwarfs. And so here, by conducting additional observations using NASA's NICER X-ray telescope on top of the International Space Station, researchers were essentially trying to study this pulsar by observing its thermonuclear explosions. But by accident, in one of the explosions, they detected a remarkable oscillation. And this oscillation usually means that the pulsar is spinning. And to be more exact, it allows us to calculate how fast it's spinning. And here the frequency was discovered to be 716 hertz. And so this 12 kilometer in size object, approximately 1.4 solar masses in mass, and that's also about 26,000 light years away from planet Earth, was basically spinning as fast as we've ever seen. And so on top of this being the X-ray binary with the shortest orbital period, it was also the fastest spinning pulsar. Although just as a side note, these types of clusters usually contain a lot of pulsars, and this is one of several pulsars already known inside NGC 6624. But there is another much more famous cluster known as Torsen 5. And back in 2004, something really exciting was discovered here as well. A team from the university where I was studying, from McGill University, discovered a pulsar that you can kind of see right here, known as PSR J1748-2446 AD, that surprisingly spins at exactly the same value. In other words, we had two objects spinning at exactly the same velocity, or with exactly the same period. And honestly, this doesn't really make much sense, especially because these two objects are in completely different locations, 
have completely different age and were even discovered decades apart. Uh, two decades, as a matter of fact. And so because of this unusual frequency of 716 Hz, it kind of raises a question. Is this possibly the highest possible period for a typical pulsar to spin at? In other words, is this the limit? Now, in terms of theories, the answer seems to be no. Based on, for example, different types of modeling, physicists predict that a typical neutron star would technically break apart if it spins 1500 times per second. So here we're talking about approximately double of what was just detected. But even spinning at 1000 times per second, neutron stars would lose so much energy by gravitational radiation that they would actually decelerate really quickly. And in this case, accretion of additional matter does not help them spin faster. And so in other words, gravitational waves from such a high spin rate would make them slow down really fast. And additional models even suggest that any frequency above 700 Hz would most likely produce so many gravitational waves that the overall spin would reduce with time. Yet here, we clearly have a case of something spinning at a little bit faster than predicted, 716. And not just one object, but two. So there's maybe a possibility that both objects reach the official physical limit. Although here I have to mention two more objects. One of them, with the name you see right here, two decades ago was also claimed to have a frequency of about 1122 Hz, so much much higher. But a much more recent reanalysis from just a year ago actually discovered that it seems to be only spinning at 380 Hz, so just above that limit produced by the acceleration from the accretion disk. And so here this is unlikely to be the case to be a record fast spinning object. You can learn about this in one of the studies in the description. And then there is this object, PSR J0952-0607, that's classified as a black widow pulsar, or basically a pulsar slowly destroying its partner, I believe we've discussed this in one of the previous videos, somewhere in the description, that spins 707 times per second. So just a little bit slower than these two other objects, but much faster than anything else. And so these three objects, along with previous discoveries, basically present us with a kind of a limit for the rotation of the neutron star. There was actually a paper a while back that tried to create a kind of a distribution for the frequency of the spin, in essence discovering that at approximately 730 Hz there seems to be some kind of a, an official limit. In other words, we haven't really found anything above 730 with the fastest spinning objects clustering around the same frequency. And it could actually be much closer to 716 Hz for some unknown reason, because both objects seem to have that frequency and so far we found nothing above that. And so here there might be some kind of an unofficial limit, possibly based on the combination of acceleration from the accretion and potentially some other effects and deceleration through the emission of gravitational waves. And this limit so far seems to be 716 times per second or 43,000 revolutions per minute. And so at the equator, these objects spin at 24% the speed of light or approximately 70,000 kilometers per second. And that's an absolutely mind-blowing value. And I don't think there's a way to imagine this or to even simulate this without setting my computer on fire. And the only way we can assume this is some kind of a limit is because both objects are extreme and both objects are spinning at exactly the same frequency. It's actually very difficult to explain why it's 716 and not something else. And for this system, because it's already so extreme, with the white dwarf so close and very likely losing a lot of mass, this is probably one way to explain why this neutron star is spinning that fast. And so once the white dwarf loses even more mass, and possibly at some point turns into some kind of a, almost like a planetary object, this system will potentially transition into something entirely different. With this white dwarf maybe even disappearing completely, or maybe being consumed by the neutron star producing the last powerful explosion. But chances are that by studying this particular object, we might have some answers in the future, mostly because, despite distances, this is such an active system and produces so many explosions all the time that there is actually quite a lot of data to study for years to come. But chances are we're not going to know much more about this object until future studies or until someone else discovers something else incredible about this system and potentially explains the unusual mystery of its very fast spin. But for now, you can check out the paper by Jai Zawal and his team in the link in the description below, and all of the other papers and other links should be there as well. And so on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, 
or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.